Ladies and gentlemen, this is Google's new state-of-the-art AI video model, VO2. In my experience, VO2 stands out as one of the most realistic and cinematic models I've seen, and clearly next-gen breakthrough. VO2 doesn't have a public release date yet, so you can't use it right now. But still, we have plenty of things to uncover. First, I would like to share this benchmark with you, where you will find some of the best video models out there. You will see the VO2 basically suppressed all existing models as we know. Essentially, this means the outputs of VO2 video generation model is preferred. You can see how it's compared against OpenAI's Sora Turbo. Essentially, outputs from Google's VO2 is preferred 58.8% of the time over Sora Turbo. And you will see among all of these models, the Chinese model Clink version 1.5 actually stood up the best against VO2. Which is not a surprise. I made many videos, many prompt battles and comparisons. And every single time Clink stood up extremely powerful against other models, including Sora. So this is not a surprise for me. And we also know that Minimax has its own merits that it shines, especially action and motion shots. So Google promises 4K video footage with VO2, the highest resolution in the AI video space so far. But what excited me the most is the controlling cameras through text prompts. This is promising exceptional prompt understanding and it opens up new cinematic potentials for us. In this example, you will see our prompt starts with low angle tracking shot. We have car drift, smoke, and the camera tracks low capturing the sleek olive green muscle car as it approaches a corner. So in the video footage you will see, it understood perfectly low angle tracking shot, it understood the corner, and it simply gave you what you asked for. It allows you to create an extremely cinematic video. You can see in this example, uh, it perfectly understood the prompt where we have this cinematic focus change from speedometer to the street and the pedestrians and it perfectly rendered the scene, which is really impressive in terms of prompt understanding. Another example where we direct the scene with words, we have a video of a person sitting in a cafe with coffee after a bit cuts to another viewpoint to reveal that person nearby table is writing a letter. This whole prompt is a chain of video shots, right? And you will see that VO manages to perfectly follow the prompt. We start with the cafe view, that we have a person sitting in the cafe, and after that scene cuts to the letter, where someone is writing a letter. It's really fantastic that how it follows the prompt so closely. Another shot where impressed me a lot is a distant shot zooms in to reveal a knight wearing a golden helmet, right? This is the first part. And he begins to charge on his zebra. So we have this shot here, lowering his lance, charging towards a clockwork octopus. So I think we got the zebra and we got the knight with the golden helmet and we got the clockwork octopus, which is fantastic. It's just confused here a little bit. I think in the prompt, it was essentially the person meant that actually knight lowers his lance. But here it got confused a little bit with octopus is actually the lowering the lens. It's a small, honest mistake, but of course it does make sometimes mistakes. I think it has also something to do with the prompt, how person structured the prompt. So if you would maybe specify that actually um, the knight lowers his lens, maybe uh, it would be a little different, but still really impressive. This is another sh video impressed me a lot. A uh, car going at top speed through a road until reaching a waterfall. It gets into the waterfall and jumps off a mountain. So how it follows this prompt is really impressive. I mean, you have a car speeding up and then it comes to the waterfall and jumps off the waterfall. Whole video is just perfectly follows your prompt, including physics. The impressive physics are here. So you don't see things like, I don't know, car is flying or just making weird physics motions, and there's nothing like that. There's nothing we see on Sora Turbo. Here's another example, a low angle POV drone shot flies along a beach as a vast beast ascends from the water. Here it managed to get the low angle POV shot. We don't really fly along beach here. So I think that was a bit of a confusion, but we have the beast ascending from the water and we have actually beach on the background. And again, this comes back to the prompting and how you structure your prompt, but it's really crazy that it understands the low angle POV drone shot perfectly. And when you think about it, low angle drone shot is, is not so straightforward for models because you need to have a drone shot which tend to always 
catch like landscape from a high angle. But then here you have this low angle shot, which is like fusion of two different shot types. It's very difficult for these models, but I think VO2 did a really good job here. Here I want to jump into the physics topic. Physics for video models are what fingers and hands were essentially for image models. You may have a great image generated by mid journey, flux or whatever, but if hand is off, then whole image is kind of off. The hands are really important for human perception. The physics of AI video generators are the same. You can have a great photorealistic video, but if physics are off, our human perception won't accept this video as real. Therefore, it's gonna completely kill the realism. The physics of VO2 is just mind blowing. Look at this shot where you have a cat jumping on a couch. This whole motion flows so smoothly. And when cat lands on the sofa, you will see that there is a little bit of like a change of texture there. And it just feels like it understands the whole motion and gravity in a perfect way. Here's another video. And this is a big challenge where most video models fail, particularly with like complex tasks like hands holding objects or motion where you see VO2 here does a great job. In fact, I have a comparison video here where you can see most of the state of art video models that how they are handling the, this cutting objects things. And some of them truly does an okay job. Not all models fail with this, but looking at the comparison, VO2 for me is so far the best. When it comes to physics, there are different types of physics, right? We have like human motion, we have motion of objects, here in this video, you will see a couple of like sports actions where humans are actually playing some like exercising different sports. And you will see that VO2 does extremely great. This is a level of motion and understanding of human physics that we never seen before in any AI video model. Of course, if you like look closely here and there, you will see, realize like few minor mistakes. But how it delivers tennis, basketball, like running especially, looks so smooth. It is fantastic job here. Here another example where we have the physics of a dog running in the beach. Uh, generally, most of the time AI video models struggle with the paws and the feet, right? It's difficult to find any mistake here. It looks really natural and the motion looks really realistic to me. Here another difficult video shot where you have skateboarding action and snowboarding. And honestly, I mean, I don't know what to add here. This looks like incredible. Look at this like skateboarding stunt. It tracks it really well. And then you would normally expect that, you know, skateboard would just act weird and the legs would disappear or whatever. But VO2 does really well. Here's another video of a pelican on a bike. I mean, this is so fantastic that it manages to render this so well. This is a difficult prompt for all AI video models. It's even for me as a human, this is like difficult to imagine this. A pelican on a bike. Incredible. In this particular video, the biggest surprise for me was like understanding of physics. When meatballs drop the sauce, how they turn and then they get the sauce as well and their color changes. This whole thing rendering the scene is just incredible work. The motion of meatballs and the sauce and everything incredibly realistic. Here's another video where we have a flying dragon. You will see the, the motion of dragon, the wings, the tail, and the urban background. Everything looks almost perfect. The render looks defect free, motion looks realistic. Even the wing motion and how tail moves while dragon is flying is incredible. Another video where we have a person uh, walking on the ice. What I like about this video so much is the reflection of fire on the ice. You, you see the reflections, right? And how they are changing while the person is walking by. Here's another video of a little hippo friend. And what I want to emphasize here, particularly, I want you to bring your attention that two front legs are static here, you realize. And the rear legs, they are dynamic. That hippo is actually pushing itself with the rear legs. I mean, it's crazy that this model is able to understand this motion. You realize how front legs are static and rear legs are moving. Here's another video of a golden retriever running in an art gallery. Again, I think in this video I like the most. Of course, the golden retriever's motion looks natural. But in the same time, you will realize that light changes quite a lot. Some parts of the art gallery has natural light and some parts are you know, artificially lit, especially artwork. And it perfectly is able to understand and render these different light types is impressive and rare.
this is a rare thing for even for AI image models. Sometimes not all models are able to render light this well. Here we have a large iron ball falls on top of a cardboard box and you have coins. How you have this iron ball falls, the coins kind of spreads around and box also renders the physics of reaction of the action of the iron ball falling. So another like big challenge for AI image and video models, the hands shuffling cards. This is really the Turing test for videos, right? And I think this is really a fantastic prompt to test AI video models. And VO2, I think did a good job here. Anatomy of hands, first of all, looks perfect for me. I can't find any mistake here. The motion looks really natural. I mean, if you look at maybe frame by frame, maybe you can find some mistakes. Here's another video of a panda riding a pterodactyl. It understood the Golden Gate Bridge, which gives us a good understanding that model is able to understand the world. Panda is, is okay, it's not a big deal, but we have a pterodactyl, the Golden Gate Bridge. These are very specific images that model needs to know. So world understanding seems also superb here. The soccer from future, uh, we have humans and robots playing soccer together. Here you will realize some slight issues with the motion, right? It's subtle and it's not ultra obvious, but if you look carefully, you may realize some slight issues where arms are mixing up to each other. But honestly, I'm cherry picking errors here. It's difficult to spot them. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the user interface. I don't have access to the model yet, but we have some great people on X that they were sharing the user interface that how this model looks like. So this is like a text to image to video where you generate a scene, then you add a motion. So it seems like a two-step approach here. So we have cinematic short film opens with a low light shot of a man in a leather jacket leaning against a vintage car. I realize here we have some world clusters underneath the prompt box, like fast, slow, smooth, etc. I wonder if these are to set up the speed of the scene. We have TV mod on top, which is gonna probably change the UI to something a little bit more focused. I wanna also touch upon the character animation and not just photorealistic stuff, but illustrative art style. So I think this is a good example, almost like Pixar level animation rendering here the eyes and the mouth movement and this um, the color of these feathers on top of the character's head. It looks fantastic. We have this example of a beautiful art style drawing that we see only for like two seconds, but it looks really pretty. And we do have this Pixar looking animation here where our character is talking. Look at the motion of hair here, almost like Pixar level render here. I want to quickly show you new Imagine tree as well. This is a new AI image generator model from Google. So Imagine 2, I didn't even make a video about it. It was an okayish model, but it didn't really challenge the state of the art models back then, especially like Flux and other models. Now we have Imagine 3 and we have ELO score benchmarks. So here it shows some impressive benchmark numbers when it's compared with Flux and particularly Recraft, as you will remember, also tested Recraft before and it had really highly competitive image models. It seems Imagine 3 doing extremely well in this comparison. We have this prompt example from Imagine 3. And this is now becoming a thing where when you type a prompt, model understands some particular parts of it and creates these layers where you can change. You can change photographic to illustrative, etc. You can change, for example, here, green suit to purple suit. I, I like this because this really opens up possibilities for further experimentation. We saw a similar example of this user interface in the new Luma Dream Machine user interface, which I'm also a big fan of. So we have a couple of examples here, still life of a Mac standing in front of a museum. And in the corner, you have a random zucchini. We have many examples here. We have a dinosaur riding a motorcycle in a Formula One race and it's a street photography. So here you can change street photography to a different medium. You can change motorcycle to something else. And you will realize underneath the prompt box, you have 35 millimeter film, you have sketchy, you have some different color tones, DSLR, you have abstract, you have some keywords for light, which gives me the idea that it's almost like endless that how you can experiment with Google's image model and you can use variety of different art mediums and styles and light types here. Here's another example, a street photography in purple color. It's cinematic and 35 millimeter film. Faces look realistic. 
but it may not be the most realistic image output that I saw before, namely um, the flux models and new mystic models, especially when you choose editorial portraits. And when you choose flux in the role mode, it comes really close to the hyperrealism. So here I would say <laughs> Google still has a challenge from some of the competitors. Closing thoughts, uh, Google's AI ecosystem has been making rapid advancements recently. We have remarkable launches. This includes Gemini 1.52, Deep Research, Notebook LM, Imagine 3, VO2, and of course the big headline, the VLO quantum chips. When it comes to VO, there is not much to be surprised actually because VO version 1 was never released to public and essentially it was an inferior model in comparison to other state-of-the-art models like Clink especially. I think they were just slowly iterating on the model. And let's be honest here that Google has an abundance of training data. They own the YouTube. So it's not a surprise for me that their video model really excels in physics and and realism. And DeepMind must be one of the best investment Google ever did, probably maybe the best. And it also shows us that how important smaller teams operating separately outside of like typical company bureaucracies, they can move really fast. And there is a definitely an innovation lesson here for many companies. A flashback to a year ago where I made a video about Sora and I was blown away by its quality, or rather the cherry picked videos OpenAI showcased. Fast forward, OpenAI introduced Sora Turbo, and it's not the full release of Sora we were expecting. Obviously, we were not blown away by the quality. I think this looks like a scaled back version of, of what they promised. And Sora Turbo falls short when compared to other state-of-the-art models. Let's be honest here. So I'm just waiting for full release here. I don't know where the full release of Sora is. I'm really confused. So today's launch, of course, feels similar. And I hope these videos are not cherry picked in a way to paint a positive picture about VO2. But I have a feeling that this looks quite different. If VO2 can live up to its potential, this is gonna be setting a new benchmark for AI video modeling. Now, hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you wanna learn more about creative intelligence, click here.